This video covers coupon bond pricing using zero coupon bond prices and a no arbitrage restriction. Hence the phrase no arbitrage bond pricing. It's going to involve four steps, but it turns out to be very, very simple. I'm going to show you on a timeline how to do those four steps, and I'll put it in the calculator as well. The first thing you do is find a coupon bond that has payments at different points in time, put the cash flows on the timeline. Then you look up the prices of zero coupon bonds, one for each of the dates that the coupon bond has a cash flow. Then what you do is replicate the cash flows of the coupon bond using the zero coupon bond. Finally, add up the prices of the replicating portfolio to get the value of the coupon bond today. So this first step is to look up a bond, figure out what its cash flows are. These are actual bond prices and quotes from 2008 in the Wall Street Journal. So a two-year note at that time, and these are all treasuries by the way, was paying a coupon of $1.75 every period for four periods. Then the principal value of $100 was paid back as well. Now by convention, bond pricing is either on a $100 or a $1,000 basis. You can tell from the face value payment at the end, in addition to the coupon, which one it is. In this case, it's 100 Then what you do is you look up bond prices for zero coupon bonds where there exists one cash flow at each of those future dates. The prices of those at the time were 99 97 98 96 97 67 and 96 54 Now the idea is it costs you 99 97 to buy $100 in a year. Or, put differently, it costs you .9997 to buy a dollar in a year. What I'd like to buy is $1.75 in a year, the cash flow on my coupon bond. Same thing in two periods from now. $98.96 is $100. .9896 is the value of $1. I want to find the value of $1.75. Figuring that out is the process known as um, the replicating portfolio. Now, if we want to replicate the cash flow in period one, what I need is $1.75. My zero coupon bond is $100. So there's some amount, um, we'll call it X, that I need to multiply the $100 future cash flow by to get $1.75. Dividing both sides by 100, I need to multiply by .0175 to end up with a $1.75 in cash flows. That's why I do this. I also have to multiply by .0175 in period 2 and 3. And in period 4, let's see, I need 101 75. There's a hundred dollar coupon out, zero coupon out there, times some amount. Dividing through gives me 1.0175. So that's that here. So all I'm doing is finding a number that if I multiply the future cash flow in the zero coupon bond, I get exactly the same cash flows. Exactly the same cash flows as a coupon bond. Here, here here and here. Then what I do is I say, okay, given that, how much does each of those cash flows cost? Well, if I have to multiply the one period zero coupon bond by 0 0.0175 to replicate the $1.75 cash flow in one period, I will also multiply its price by 0 0.0175, and that's how much it cost me today. So let's go ahead and do that on the calculator. Whoops, wait a second. There it is. So I need, well, and what was the price? 99.97 times 0 0.0175. So the cost of buying a dollar seventy-five in one period is a dollar seventy four ninety four seventy five. I'm just going to store that in memory register one. I need to do the same thing for each 
of the other three zero coupons. The price of the zero coupon in two periods is 98.96. Times point zero one seventy five. The amount that it cost me today to buy a dollar seventy five in two years is a dollar seventy three eighteen. Store that in memory register two. The price of the three year coupon is ninety seven sixty seven. Times point zero one seven five. So the price of a hundred dollars is ninety seven sixty seven. The price of dollar seventy five was one seventy ninety two. I'm going to store that in memory register three. And then let's see. Four periods from now, the price is ninety six fifty four times in this case one hundred one point zero one seven five equals ninety eight twenty three. I'm going to store that in memory register four. So that's where each of these numbers comes from. It's the fraction of a zero coupon bond I need to replicate a dollar seventy five in one period, a dollar seventy five in two periods, a dollar seventy five in three periods, and a dollar seventy five in four periods. This is how much it would cost me today to buy each of those bonds. Now this portfolio of bonds exactly replicates the cash flows. Of the zero of the coupon bond that I'm trying to price. So, the value of that set of cash flows today, which is just the sum of those prices, has to equal the value of the coupon bond. Otherwise, there would be an arbitrage opportunity. So, all I have to do is add these up. Recalling one, plus recalling two, plus recalling three, plus recalling four. 103.42. Now, you can do this fairly easily on a calculator if you have eight or nine different cash flows. It's very easy to do on a computer, no matter how many cash flows you've got. This is the way bond pricing is done in the real world by bond traders, because they have available to them at any point in time the prices of these zero-coupon bonds, and they can identify when arbitrage opportunities exist. If this bond was priced less than 103.42, you would sell these zero coupon bonds, use the 103.42 to buy the coupon bond, and the pocket the difference. That drives up the prices of the coupon bond until there's no arbitrage opportunity left. So this is actually the equilibrium price of this bond.